Welcome one to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition we finish up Super Mario All-Stars by taking on Super Mario Bros. 3, arguably the best platformer of all time. I'll always, of course, have fond memories of Super Mario Bros. 3, both in the All-Stars and the original version of the game. It was the first one I ever bought with my own money, saving up pennies, rolling them, and going to a local store to actually purchase my copy of Super Mario Bros. 3. And as soon as I got it home, I immediately fell in love with the game, like many gamers of the time. Whether it was first seeing it in the movie The Wizard, or eventually getting to play it for ourselves. Whether it was just the core great gameplay, the Kooplings being introduced, or the awesome new abilities, Mario 3 is an absolute classic. After that intro, we're going to select the one-player game and jump into the first world of the game. Throughout this run, I will be gathering and using some of the abilities throughout the course of it, as well as doing a couple of the secrets as well. I'll be getting the warp whistles, but I just won't be using them. I figure at this point, though, everyone probably knows the locations and how to get all the warp whistles, but still fun to go ahead and gather them. I will also be completing every level in the game throughout the course of this run. The first stage, we're introduced to the raccoon ability, and we can use that to fly up and enter into this pipe where we get to a number three drawn in all of these coins. The game, of course, has standard Mario fare, where collecting 100 coins will end up getting you an extra life, but also added into the mix are these cards at the end of each level that will end up giving you a symbol, whether it be star, fire flower, or mushroom. If you're able to get three of a kind, you'll get one extra life for Mushroom, two for Fire Flower, and five if you're able to get the Star. And this is a common theme that we also see throughout the game, as we have a couple of minigames that have us matching that sort of thing up. Level 2 is the first level with hills, which is kind of cool that we get to slide down them and actually run over enemies. This is something that was new as well at the time. Level number three is the first level that contains a warp whistle. Just a little ways in after dodging a boomerang brother, we're going to hit this Koopa Troopa and destroy all these blocks and reveal one of the pink music note boxes. By finding these in the game, if you jump on them, it'll send you kind of up into the air and onto a cloud little area where you can collect a whole bunch of extra coins. Nothing really else to this whole area, and it does take you instantly to the end of the stage, which we'll have to backtrack a tiny bit to get to where the whistle, well, the thing that lets us go into the background to get to the whistle, but it's not too far from where this pipe ends up leading us. When we drop down here, we're going to head over to the left, and at any point, if you duck down on one of these white blocks, holding down for a little bit of time, of course, you go into the background and allow you to actually get behind the end of the stage and find the first of the Warp Whistle locations. The Warp Whistles will take you to the stage select screen, but you're only selecting from three pipes at a time for the first two sets, and then finally, World 8 at the very bottom. You can use multiple warp whistles inside of the warp zone if you wanted to to kind of instantly take you to the various levels. It's one of those deals, just like with Mario 1, you can actually beat Mario 3 pretty quickly by instantly using those warp whistles to get to the end of the game, but we won't be doing that here. In level 4, it's the first of the potential white mushroom houses that can appear. The way that these work is there's a few levels in the game that if you collect every one of the coins in the stage, you get rewarded with a bonus white mushroom house that contains special items. For example, if we're able to get all of the coins in level 4 here, we'll actually get a white mushroom house that gives us one of the P-Wings. The P-Wings is basically a raccoon ability, but it has infinite flight, so you can just fly over the entire stage, which is very useful for a few difficult levels. I usually ended up using it in one of the stages during Bowser's World at world number 8. The hardest one of the coins that are to get in this stage is definitely this one here as you have to kind of quickly jump on the platform, break the block, and then keep jumping before the screen scrolls enough to prevent you from being able to finish off all of the coins. At the end of the level, I hit it just right so I end up getting the 5-up 
from the stars. It's actually relatively easy with the right timing to get the symbols you want each time, but uh, stars are actually probably the easiest, actually, which end up rewarding you with the most amount of lives. Since I did end up getting all of the coins in the level, the special Mushroom House ends up appearing, and I get a P-Wing. Next up, I'm going to do one of the mini-games here. These spade blocks on the map allow you to do a lineup game. Here, if you're able to make a picture with one of the three different symbols, you'll be rewarded with that amount of lives. One for Mushroom, two for Fire Flower, or three if you're able to get Star. I'm usually really bad at this, so it took several retries of the beginning of this game until I was able to get a 5 up right away from the very beginning. Next up is the first fortress of the game. There's a lot of these throughout, and each one is guarded by an enemy known as Boom Boom, and there's two versions of them, a regular normal version and then the para version that's able to fly around. We're going to use, though, the P ability here by building up enough speed and doing a running flight jump with the raccoon suit in order to get above in order to find the other warp whistle. There's a spot right below that top portion with a dry bones that you can build up speed there as well, but I've always liked to kind of build up the speed ahead of time if possible to get up there. Level 5 up next has busy beetles for the first time in the game. We're going to take the upper path. There's two paths you can kind of take through this level if you would like to do so. Sliding down at the end, watch out for the piranha plants and finish up the stage pretty easily. Another type of level in the game is the Hammer Brother Battles. On most of the leveled maps, there are one, two, or three Hammer Brothers walking around, in which case you'll face off in a battle against either a Hammer Brother, Boomerang Brother, Fireball Shooting Brother, or Giant Hammer Brother. And if you're able to best them in battle, they will reward you with a treasure chest that contains an item. These items are set for which ones you will end up getting, and some of them are actually really useful, and other ones not so much. There's a couple like the hammers that can be used in order to help you break open certain rocks on the world map and allow you to get to areas with secrets. Level 6 in World 1 has a few tricky platforms, but with a nice running ability using the raccoon suit, I'm able to get over a lot of it. The regular mushroom houses in the game, there's a couple of types. Ones that have three treasure chests that contain either a fire flower, leaf, or a mushroom, which is completely random. They aren't even set when you kind of go into the area. In fact, they just change up up until you actually end up selecting one. So you're never sure which one you're going to get. There's no strategy to always getting a, a leaf or always getting a fire flower during them. There's other mushroom houses throughout the course of the game that end up having certain set items, such as the cool suits like the tanuki suit or the frog suit. At the end of the world, we end up going to the castle where we find out the king for that land has been transformed. The transformations are different from the original NES version here in the All-Stars version, where they instead use a lot of different enemies, including enemies that we wouldn't even see in this game, but see either in previous Mario games or in games that technically came afterwards, like Super Mario World. Heck, even Donkey Kong Jr. ends up making an appearance as one of these transformations. You then get transferred to the airship, and these airships are filled with cannons and other hazards for you to deal with, and when you make it to the end, you have to battle one of the Koopalings. First up is Larry, a pretty easy fight. All these bosses will take three hits by jumping on top of them to defeat them, or you can actually defeat them with your special abilities like the Fire Flower in order to defeat them. Once they end up going down, grab the Magic Rod, and we move on to the next world of the game. The Koopalings aren't actually the kids of Bowser, though it was always kind of hinted at. I think even in the cartoon, there was more of the father relationship between Bowser and the Koopalings, but they're just basically minions in the long run. The only true kid of Bowser is Bowser Jr. After you complete the airship and move on to the next world, right before you do so, you do get a letter from Peach, who gives you a little bit of information, usually a hint, such as with the booze. If you look the opposite direction of the booze, they'll stop coming towards you, which is actually pretty useful knowledge the very first time you would be playing the game, even though you haven't been introduced to the booze yet. 
World 2 is the desert themed world. One of my favorites though in the game for sure. It also has the crazy mad sun level a little bit ways into it. If you end a level under certain conditions, a couple of things can happen, such as the spade matching game appearing for every 80,000 points that you end up scoring. These matching minigames will end up netting you extra items, some coins, and an extra life if you're able to complete it. They have set patterns though, they're the same setups every time. I remember first realizing this when I got the strategy guide for Mario 3, which you got as being a subscriber to Nintendo Power. I'm not going to do all of them or anything, I just wanted to showcase one of them and completing all of the items located in it. Another thing that can occur though when you end up completing a level is in certain worlds, if you have a multiple of 11 in your coin counter, one of the Hammer Brothers will actually turn into a treasure ship. Basically, it's just a set of ships that have coins on them, and there's a good potential that if you play the game a lot even, you may never end up seeing it because of the conditions that end up needing to happen. Level 2 in World 2 is another one of those stages where if you're able to collect all the coins in it, you end up getting another one of those special mushroom houses. The way to do this one's a little bit tricky, but the way we're going to do it here is making sure that we collect all of the coins that are loose. Once we do that, we're going to head back, hitting the platform again, ducking underneath, and then hitting the first block in order to get a coin, and then the second one in order to hit the POW block, and then use that in order to collect all of these coins. You gotta make sure you're quick, though, and collect the last set at the very end. You only get one shot at it, though, as the POW switch doesn't end up respawning, so... If you end up missing any, though, you won't end up getting the special mushroom house, though you're really not missing out on much by not doing this. The mushroom house here, the white or blue mushroom house, or ghost mushroom house as I like to call it when I was a kid, ends up giving you an anchor. The anchor prevents the ship at the end of a level from moving once you end up dying on it, basically. If you fail to complete the end of the world airship your first time through, the airship actually tries to get away and goes to another spot randomly on the map and you have to chase it down, the anchor just stops it from doing that, which honestly isn't all that useful. It's one of the rarer items though in the game since you can only get it from these white mushroom houses. Next up is another fortress, and this is the first time we actually will be battling Boom Boom here. We're going to run underneath the spikes here, jump up to the top portion, just to speed things along a little bit. Have to then enter the door located here in order to get to the chamber against the boss. Takes three jumps on him, and you can time it really nicely to easily chain the jumps in a row before he's able to really get anything going. This ends up making things a lot easier, and once he's defeated, grab the question mark sphere and move on to the next level. In case you're wondering about the other white mushroom houses in the game, as there is one in the first seven worlds, the other levels are 3, 8, 4, 2, 5, 5, 6, 7, and 7, 2, and it actually alternates between getting a P-Wing and an Anchor. So, level 1, we got a P-Wing, world 2, we got an Anchor, and then it just goes back and forth like that. After dealing with a boomerang brother and grabbing one of the music boxes, which if you play them, all it does is make the Hammer Brothers go to sleep on the world map. This allows them to kind of stay in place so you're able to kind of get to them easier, or bypass them easier, you don't have to worry about them chasing you down if you die in the next level. But other than that, really isn't all that special either. I always love the end of this level though, because you have to hit the Koopa Troopa and cause it to do a chain reaction of just hitting all these blocks, eventually revealing the pipe so you can kind of get down it safely. Next up is one of the most famous levels from Mario 3, and that is the weird quicksand looking icon on the map, but within it is the Mad Sun, which will come to life about halfway through the level and try to chase you down. One thing I find funny, if you try to use the uh, running fly here, you end up glitching a little bit with Mario rotating on the top of the tornado, it's just kind of funny to see that. When the sun comes to life, it will kind of just shake a little bit on the left or right upper corners, and then do and sweep underneath and trying to hit you. Pretty easy to dodge, but this is the only level he ends up appearing, and of course became one of the more interesting and popular enemies of the game.
At this point, you can either go the top path or the bottom one, but we're gonna do both here. So we're gonna start with the bottom one here where you have some chain chomps introduced to you. Take the upper path and kind of jump over most of the chain chomps throughout the course of the level. You can knock down one of these Koopa Troopas to break some of those blocks down there if you like, or just finish up the stage like normal. Now we're gonna head to the top part here and go to level 4. At the beginning of the stage, you can either just go straight to the right, or if you have the ability to fly, you can actually fly up here to a separate area that will allow you to get some more coins, and it's kind of like a nice little bonus area. Not a whole lot of levels have something like this, so it's kind of weird, but still plenty of extra bonus coins if you want to go through that. There's also a PAL switch to hit, a P switch to hit, so you can uh, turn all of these blocks in the coins and gather a whole ton of them that way. Watch out for the uh, boomerang brother though at the end waiting for you. My main goal is to try to take out the other boomerang or hammer brother on the map so that I'm able to get a hammer to break the block in the upper right corner for the extra little bonus area. But it looks like I have to complete every other level first, so we're going to do the pyramid next. There's a bunch of busy beetles throughout here, and if you have a uh, raccoon leaf going in, it will help you because you can just break the blocks a lot easier in this area. A little bit of a maze with a few dead ends, but still rather simplistic to kind of get through. At the end, you have to watch out for a busy beetle on the top, as as soon as you get near it, it will actually drop down. Once you avoid two of these, you then can make it to the pipe at the end, but unfortunately I end up getting hit while trying to jump over the piranha plant. Now we have the boomerang brother in our path that we're able to take out. Pretty simple fight, obviously, and once we have him defeat it, we're going to be able to grab the hammer and go into that upper right area. I always wait for the first boomerang to kind of get far out enough so I'm able to jump on him. Usually try to hit him before that second boomerang ends up coming out from him. In the upper right corner, use the hammer and it will open up and take you to a little bonus area. Now here you have a mushroom house as well as hammer brother fire shooting guys, fire brothers. Uh, you can grab the frog suit from this mushroom house, and then you have a pretty tough fight here against these fire brothers because they spit out fire pretty quickly and can be quite deadly, but a nice little jump at the beginning, you can bounce off both of their heads. When they're defeated, we get the third of the warp whistles, and now we're going to move on to the castle of the level. I always found it weird though they have that extra little set of blocks there. You can just kind of go the path a little bit more into the dead end. I'm not sure why they even needed to do that, but... Either way, we now move on to the airship. The next airship is a little bit more challenging than the first one. We also have some new stuff introduced. You have plenty of bullet bills and cannons along the way, but you also have to deal with the rocky wrenches. These are the little mole-like guys that pop out of the ground and, well, throw wrenches in your direction. Usually I wait on this left side until the bullet bill shooter things, the cannons, are exposed a bit so I can kind of get by a little easier. Hitting this block will get you in either a mushroom or a fire flower if you're already Super Mario. We're going to go underneath here and go on to the other side quickly and jump up. That way the cannons don't even have a chance to actually fire at us. Right over here is where the rocky wrenches end up showing up. You can actually bounce on their heads multiple times. They just keep on respawning. You can keep jumping on them and knocking them off of the area. but. Watch out for them, and then go into the pipe to take on Morton. Now, instead of jumping on him, I'm going to do the other strategy a little bit. Um, he unfortunately jumped right into me, so I couldn't do it purely. But, if you're able to hit him with enough fireballs, you can actually beat him that way, which is kind of a cool little alternative, and similar to the original Mario Brothers with the Bowsers at the end of each of the worlds.
For completing World 2, we get another letter from Princess, who tells us about the Karibo Shoe. The Karibo Shoe, or Goomba Shoe, as Karibo is actually the Japanese name for Goombas, uh, is an item that we won't see until World 4, but they kind of introduce it and let you know about it here. And we also get one of the Lakitu or Lakitu clouds. What the clouds are able to do is actually bypass a level on the map, most levels on the map. The only negative is you end up getting locked in as far as whatever level you previously completed as your last checkpoint. So if you die in a level, you get sent back to the level you previously just completed, like just as far as the world map is concerned. So if you pass a level and end up dying in the next level, you get teleported back to the level you last beat. So it ends up you know, negating what the cloud was actually truly able to do for you. So, if you're gonna use it at all, be sure that you complete the next level, whatever it ends up being for you. This next stage is one where we can hit this platform and use it to ride across a majority of the stage here, jumping off here just for this block, which will net you either a mushroom or an item there, and then continue riding over to the right, watching out for the cheap cheeps. Using the Fire Flower ability, I'm able to hit the Cheap Cheeps from this platform. Watch out for the Piranha Plant to finish up the level. The Mushroom House, located right next to where we currently are, is one that we end up getting one of the Frog Suits. In fact, the first Frog Suit, if you didn't find that secret area in World 2. The Frog Suit's cool, it allows you to swim in the water much easier, but on land, it's really not all that useful. One cool thing is, in the game, if you use either the Tanuki suit, or the Hammer Brother suit, or the Frog suit, and actually complete one of the airships using those special abilities, you get a slightly different set of texts from the King once you end up doing so. I'll actually attempt that later in the game with one of the Frog suits, because it actually has some really nice jumping ability, and the airships, there's a lot of levels in the airships where you get to make a lot of longer jumps, which actually it ends up coming in uh, useful to a degree at least. World 3 is one of my particular favorites in the game, mostly because it is the water-themed area. Basically, Worlds 2 through 4 are my favorites, uh, for the most part. My least favorites being World 7, for sure, and a bit in World 6, just because of some of the more difficult stages, especially when I was a kid. This fortress is a bit of a maze. You basically have a lot of doors. Picking the right one will take you to where we want to, against the Boom Boom fight. But if you pick any of the other ones, you end up in the other parts of the room. You'll be able to find an extra life that way. Uh, a lot of them just end up dropping you down in the water, and you'll have to backtrack and go through that room again until you finally end up finding the correct door. Before heading on to levels 4 and 5, we're going to take out another one of the Hammer Brothers here. We have two of them to deal with. The first one that we end up defeating gives us another hammer that we can then use for another part. Since there's two Hammer Brothers on this map, you may end up getting the one with the hammer first, or you may end up getting the other one, which unfortunately only has a star. You want to end up getting the hammer though, because you can actually open up another block, just like in World 2, and get to a secret area that ends up containing a lot of levels. Next up is another one of the stages, like a grassy plain, and it actually has some cool hills that we'll be able to use to jump. A little bit into the stage, you'll have to deal with Lakitu, or Lakitu for the first time, dropping down the spinies, trying to uh, make contact with you, but we're just going to kind of outrun him for the most part in, in the level and just get to the end. Before going to level 5, I'm going to take out the other Hammer Brother here. Always having Fire Flower is very useful. Another thing that's useful is you do end up getting stars, like for example here from this Hammer Brother, and you can use these especially at a Hammer Brother fight. Since you're only going to have the invincibility for such a short time at the beginning of a stage, it's not really useful for most levels. However, they're very useful for Hammer Brother battles. The next stage has us going underwater again. You have the giant fish for you to deal with in these stages. The big Berthas and the boss basses. You have big Bertha that shoots out the little cheap cheap and you also have boss bass who can end up eating you. You also have a lot of the annoying Electros, aka these electric jellyfish like creatures that can end up shocking you or basically just end up hurting if you run into them. Before heading downwards and opening up that rock, which is where we're going to head, we're going to head to level 6 here, which is another one of the scrolling style of levels. 
You do have these platforms, as you've noticed throughout the game, that if you stand on for too long, they end up falling, and sometimes you actually have to use these to help you get to certain areas by having them fall and then jumping off of them at the right moments. So you can kind of use this area to practice a little bit as far as timing is concerned for how long it takes them to start falling. This is another fun level to try to see if you're able to get all the coins, though you won't be rewarded with one of the white mushroom houses if you're able to do so. Here you can get a peace winch in order to collect a bunch of extra coins if you would like to do so. When you make it to the end of the level, you have to be a little bit careful though because of the spinning platform. Wait for it to stop spinning and then quickly make your way to the pipe. The next level introduces the spike enemies, a weird enemy overall, pulling out spiked balls from their stomach and then spitting them out and throwing them at you. We're going to go up to the top portion here and run along the clouds on the ceiling. We're able to kind of skip over a decent amount of the level here. Before heading into the fortress, I'm going to drop down here and use the hammer in order to hit open this rock. And then you can go to the little boat at the end and take the boat over to two mushroom houses located here. And then a third mushroom house located a little bit over to the right. After gathering up those items, we're going to head backwards and go now to that fortress located here. This is an interesting fortress as a lot of it is located underneath the water. Here we also have the enemy known as Stretch introduced. Basically it's a boo that's part of a weird platform, pops out its head and moves back and forth on top of the platform trying to hit you. Trying to swim in between the stretches can be a little bit of a pain. You know, a lot of times you'll want to wait for them to kind of go back inside of the platform before attempting to swim past them. When we make it to the end, we have to deal with another boom boom fight. We're going to prevent him from trying to fly here by jumping on him as soon as he pops back out. If you time it right, you can easily hit him again, but if you miss time it, you may end up getting hit by him. Either way, when he's done, we're moving on to level 8 of World 3. Level number 8 has another one of the giant boss basses that will try to eat you up if you get too close to him. It's a little bit rough on the hit detection as far as him just jumping up and instantly being able to swallow Mario. But when we go through this little area, we're going to hit this P-switch, go underneath the blocks, and make it to the pipe before he has a chance to munch on us. Level 9 has a bunch of bombs that are going to come our way, landing on top of them, and they will end up, of course, getting ready to explode, so you want to try to avoid that, of course. You also have a bunch of ice blocks that you'll pick up, and you can use those as weapons, or just use them to get them out of the way so that you're able to reach the pipes and get through the stage. At the end of the level, you have to go down a pipe and then through a very small area and up another pipe. I'm never quite sure why they even need to add this little transition area, but either way, we hit the end and move on to the castle for world number three.
Like I mentioned, we have some of the transformations being Mario World enemies, as you can see with the dino located here for the king in World 3. As, of course, the ships progress, they do get harder, usually introducing us to more pits and plenty of more hazards as far as the cannons and other such things that we have to deal with. Maneuver around here, wait for the cannons to fire out, and you can jump up easily to the question mark block and get yourself a power up if you want it. If you time it right, you can actually bounce off these cannonballs and get on top of this part, just so you have avoid a little bit of the traffic. Here we have these screw-like platforms that you can jump on in order to slowly move them a little bit. You have to keep jumping on them to keep moving them. And while you don't need to jump on it during this section, it introduces you to that kind of whole logic, and it's something we'll have to do a bunch more later on in the game as far as the airships are concerned. I'm going to take the top portion here and watch out for the wrench throwing rocky wrenches and drop down the pipe in order to battle Wendy. Wendy is a rather difficult fight, at least one that I always had trouble with as a kid. If you allow her to fire out her projectiles, she'll fire out multiple rings, eventually with three bouncing around the room while also trying to dodge her. If you're quick about it, you can actually prevent her from firing out more than just the first ring. But once she's defeated, we grab the rod and move on. The beginning of World 4 was always weird to me as well because you start off near two pipes. One pipe just basically works as kind of a shortcut, but you can't use it yet because of the lock by one of the fortresses that's stopping you from doing so. And then the other pipe ends up taking you to the first level here. This is the uh, giant world, the big small world, where you have giant enemies to deal with. Giant Koopa Troopas, Goombas, and giant Hammer Brothers known as Sledge Brothers. Level 2 is a water-based level. You have some cheap cheeps in the water beneath you and a bunch more of the giant Koopa Troopas and the like to deal with. Plenty of giant pipes with small fire spewing piranha plants. I've always wondered if they actually meant to make a bigger version of them for this level in particular, since you do have a larger version of the other piranha-like plant. The Hammer Brothers for this world are the Sledge Brothers, as in Sledgehammer, instead of just normal Hammer Brothers. Defeating this one here, we end up getting another one of the Lakitu or Lakitu Clouds that we can use to bypass the level, but we won't be needing to do that. Level number three here starts off with one of the Sledge Brothers. We're going to quickly run underneath of them and jump over the second one in order to get to the pipe. Once going through the pipe, we're going to head down here with a bunch of the busy beetles. This level has a few gaps that you'll have to deal with, as well as there is an area at the end of the stage which can end up knocking you backwards due to the way that the platform is set up. Watch out for the spinies that try to fall from the ceiling, just like the busy beetles. And right here, if you end up getting hit by this at the right moment, you may accidentally get knocked back into the pit. Next up is the first of the fortresses here in World 4. You have the little tiny walking flames. I've always liked these guys just because they're just an odd enemy. Sitting on top of a candle, and then when you uh, look the opposite direction, they start walking towards you like booze. Watch out for the thwomps here, and we're going to 
wait for this flame to kind of bypass us a little bit, stare at him while the Thwomp goes back up before going right past. A lot of this area is pretty much just the waiting game, waiting for the Thwomps to retract before we're able to sneak on past and make it to the area against the boss. Deliver the normal three jumps on top of him, he's not even one of the para-flying boom-booms here, and move on to the next level. Level number four is an underwater level, but you can use a little trick at the very beginning and jump off of the Lakitu and get on top of the platform. There is another one just a little bit farther on in the stage, which is a little bit harder to jump on. But uh, then we're just going to kind of swim underneath the waves a little bit and work our way through trying to stay, you know, not at the very surface because you'll probably end up getting hit by one of the spinies, but just keep on moving. It's a pretty simple level. Over here to the left, we have two more Sledge Brothers that can possibly be here. Take out the first one here. Jump when he, of course, jumps, or else the earthquake will end up happening, causing the ground to shake, preventing you from being able to jump for a few moments. One of them will end up containing one of the P-Wings, and we just happen to have the other one come right towards us, so might as well take out him as well. This one gives us one of those stars, which, like I said, not really all that useful for regular levels, but Hammer Brother battles, they can actually really come in handy. Level number six here is a pretty interesting stage. A little bit in, you actually have a door you can go through if you want, which will actually shrink all the enemies. It's kind of a cool mechanic of just the way they actually made like two identical levels to one another. And the doors in the stage will either take you to the giant version, which you start off on, or you can go through the door and it'll take you to the small version. All the enemies are their normal sizes. Level number five, as we do them a little bit out of order, start off with a little bit of a staircase type of thing with the different Koopa Troopas. You also have bullet bills, and then the ones that uh, chase you down a little bit. If they end up going past you, they'll turn around and try to chase you the opposite direction, whatever way the bullet bills are going here. Next up is another fortress level before we actually make it to the castle. Start off by running across here and you have to watch out for these platforms. These are the ones, of course, that fall after a few moments of standing on them. And there's a lot of lava that's, of course, instant kill if you end up getting dropped down below. There's a hidden door located right here, which you can find as the block to the right is actually one of those P-switches. So you can hit that and it'll actually give you a little bit of an outline of coins to show you where the hidden door is located. But if you know where it is already, you can just instantly go through it. The next area is a series of pipes, and this is a kind of area that we will have a couple of times in the game, and you have these different platforms that kind of make a ghost platform from them, and it starts traveling, either in one set direction, if it has an arrow on it, or if it has an exclamation point, it'll go in different directions. Every time you jump on it, it'll end up changing directions, and you have to manipulate it in order to get through the pipes and get through the area. Once you're able to get to the top, heading through the pipe, this will drop us down into this room here. Taking another pipe will take us to a question mark block, which will contain three extra lives. You can get extra coins if you want to by flying up into the top portion of this area, but it's just extra coins located here. Once you pop out of it, though, you'll be in an area with a couple of dry bones and then the boom boom fight to the right. A little bit of cramped quarters, though, for sure, but pretty still easy to deal with. For this transformation, we actually have a guest appearance by Donkey Kong Jr. I don't know if that means that the actual Donkey Kong Jr. is actually a king and just was transformed and he's not actually Donkey Kong Jr. or what is implied here. But like I said, these transformations were only in uh, the All-Stars version of, of the title. 
World 4's airship, of course, is the toughest jet. Start off with some flames shooting immediately out of the very first cannon that we have to deal with. Thankfully, you can just kind of wait for the screen to very slowly scroll by so we can just jump over the flames. Just a few moments in, you have two paths here. If you take the upper path, you'll have one of those screw-like platforms that you can jump on in order to rotate it and try to get across. There's a series of flames coming out of the bottom area here, which of course if you mess up and end up falling, you may end up uh, getting hit. But all you can do is just move this a little bit over and you can make a nice big leap over to the right so you don't have to really put up too much of a f hassle with that screw platform there. If you're able to stay on the top portion, not only do you have a much easier path, just one rocky wrench to deal with, you also avoid plenty of flame-spewing cannons. Right after that, there's more flame-shooting cannons, and you have two paths for you to take. Take the upper path, just a little bit easier, I guess, as far as moving. The only way you would take really the bottom one, I guess, would be if you were only small Mario. But taking the upper one will allow you to kind of just stay on the top of a lot of the platforms. And the only real annoyance is just how slow this ends up scrolling, so you have to wait a while in order to get through the stage. Once again, take the upper path, and thankfully this is the last of the area, and we can finally hit the pipe and head on down. World 5 is up next, it is an interesting one. It's the sky-based world, and it has two different parts to it. One that's on the ground, and after going through a tower into the sky, you're then into the sky portion for the second half of the world. The first level has us traveling up a series of stair-like platforms, watching out for these small little piranha-like plants known as nippers that are going to try to jump up and grab you. When we make it to the top, if we have the raccoon ability, we can kind of just float down the second portion of the stage until we make it to the end. The second level here ends up starting us off by heading down a pipe, and what you want to do is, as you're falling here, hold right on the D-pad a little bit, and hopefully you can end up landing on one of the music note blocks, or just one of the other standard blocks, and work your way easily up to the pipe. Once you make it up to the pipe, you can use the hills to slide down, taking out a series of Goombas, and then jump over this big hill to the very far right into another pipe, which will take us to the end of the stage. The Mushroom House located here will give us the Tanuki Suit, which is the awesome ability to actually turn into a stone statue. This will actually allow you to get bypassed by enemies and they won't end up hurting you while you're using it. The next level has the Karibo Shoes, the Goomba Shoes. Throughout the course of this area, you have spinies walking around and some other enemies, but what we're going to do is get underneath this Goomba inside of the shoe and then hit the block underneath him to cause him to get knocked out of it, and then we can actually get inside the shoe and use that to get around the level. It's one of the cooler and more memorable aspects of the game, but we only get to really do it here. Heading through the pipe at the end, make it to the second part of the stage. Thankfully, in the Karibo shoe, you can actually stand on top of the piranha plants, the nippers that are in the different pits located here without actually getting damaged. Though, if you get hit by normal enemies, you'll get knocked out of the shoe. 
Unfortunately, you can't take the shoe with you to other levels, and when you complete the stage, you end up coming out of it. The first part of the world here does have a couple of Hammer Brothers for us to deal with. Taking out the first one, we end up getting just a star. Thankfully, the other Hammer Brother is waiting for us as soon as we end up popping out here, and we can take on him right away as well. The other Hammer Brother, once defeated, will end up dropping another P-Wing, which is, of course, a very, very useful item. You can only hold so many items in your inventory, though, and once it ends up filling up, whatever your last item in your inventory is will get replaced with ever what new one you end up getting, so always keep that in mind if you picked up a lot of power-ups. The fortress here, watch out for the thwomps throughout it, and you also have those rotating annoying enemies that look like, kind of like floating waffles, or at least to me always look like kind of rotating, glowing, flashing waffles. Just like with the rest of the fortresses, at the end we have a boom boom battle to deal with, and it's a pretty large room, so thankfully it's a pretty easy fight, since he's easy to jump on. The next level is the interesting tower stage. And this is the only level like it in the game, and has a cool, like, unique-looking icon as far as its design is concerned. Starts off with more of those rotating, annoying enemies. Thankfully, you can get a power-up located right here in this question mark block before heading up the pipe. Once up here, there's a couple of thwomps in this room for us to watch out for. After heading up the pipe at the end of the room, though, you'll be outside, or in more of a sky-like area, with a whole bunch of blocks, a few of which are those hidden little mini Goombas located inside of them. Right after that is a very small room that just has a thwomp and one of those rotating enemies before heading up a couple more pipes. Once again, you'll now be outside back into a sky-like area, head over to the right just a little bit, and hit this one block that's not a question mark block, and it will end up causing a beanstalk-like thing to appear, a piranha plant thing, and we can climb up and make it to the sky, the main part of world number five. These are some pretty challenging levels, easily the most challenging as far as platforming is concerned up to this point. The level is filled here with a bunch of the non-stop spinning little platforms as well as a few that will be balanced and some that do stop for a second and then start spinning again. The balanced ones, of course, when you step on one side will immediately start leaning that way, so you have to quickly either rebalance it or try to get off of it. Level number five is filled with a bunch of the falling type of platforms that will fall after a few moments of being on them. Lots of Koopa Troopas, Piranha Plants, and Goombas throughout the course of this. You also have a Flame Chomp that you'll get to see. There's a few more Flame Chomps throughout the game that are a bit annoying. There's one level in particular where the Flame Chomps can end up being a bit more of a nuisance. Level number seven is a relatively simple stage where you have a whole bunch of blocks, some of which are those little mini Goombas located inside of them. Just keep running along the blocks as you have a lock or two trying to float overhead, trying to take you out. But this is a pretty easy level, especially for this world. So I recommend taking this path since you do have a choice between level six and seven, and if you're not going for 100%, go to this level for sure. The much more difficult level 6, though, is a scrolling style of level with a bunch of para-beetles. These are the red floating little beetle guys that can fly, and when you land on them, they'll go down a little bit and then start ascending up into the air, so you can use them as platforms, and since it is scrolling, you'll need to do so to help guide you through the course of the level. This level is definitely a lot tougher than the one that we just did in level 7, so... If you want that easier one, definitely go that path. The level is, of course, a little bit slower paced, though, due to the fact you have to wait for the screen to scroll on through.
a little bit ways in, you have another one of those flame chomps that are going to try to get at you. You can easily, thankfully, jump on their heads, though, to defeat them and then reach the pipe at the end of the stage. After dealing with another pretty easy Hammer Brother, we're going to go into the next level, and it's another one of the fortresses that has a lot of lava, because you have lava on the ceiling and lava on the floor. The floor is literally lava here, as we're going to be running across small broken bridges. There's some... Level number 8 has a lot of cloud platforms and a Lakitu above us, throwing down all these spinies towards us. Gonna try to keep ahead of them as much as possible during a large portion of this before reaching the pipe. A pretty straightforward and easy level for sure. Next up, though, is level 9, and this is a weird scrolling level. Instead of just scrolling left and right, or even up and down, it instead scrolls in a diagonal pattern heading up into the upper right corner. There's a bunch of up and down moving platforms that you have to go to, as well as sometimes you just have to kind of wait for a little bit, and flame chomps will try to get at you. If you don't have a power-up or anything, some of these flame chomps can be a bit annoying to try to jump on and then quickly get back to safety of one of the up and down moving platforms. I've always disliked this level, as I always had trouble as I got to it when I was a kid. Thankfully though, it's not extremely long, and we're moving on to the airship for World 5. World 5's airship starts off with a cannon that's going to be firing at us along with a flamethrower. Nothing too out of the ordinary for these kinds of stages. There's a question mark block not too far in so you can get a power up if you do need it at the beginning here. When you make it here you can bounce off one of the cannonballs and actually get to the top portion of this platform that way you can just avoid the fire from the cannons and just wait safely until the screen scrolls over a little bit. A nice running jump will also net you onto another platform, wait for a few moments for it to scroll enough so that you can continue along to the right. Once again, you can do the same if you're able to time it nicely on one of the cannons, but if you don't, you have a little bit of a gauntlet you have to run through with four cannons on the top and four cannons on the bottom all firing towards you, which is a little bit of a difficult barrage, but thankfully that's the end of the area, and we go down to the pipe to fight Roy. Now, Roy is a heavy Koopaling, so when he ends up landing, he causes earthquakes, so every time he ends up moving, you want to make sure you, you jump into the air when he's bouncing all around, that way you don't get shaken and he doesn't run into you. Three hits, though, and he's done, and we're moving on to the ice world, world number six.
Oh boy, World 6. I've always loved the music on the world map of World 6, and I do like ice levels usually in games, but World 6 always gave me trouble. Mostly for the moving piranha plants that throw up their spike balls. If you don't have either a power-up to go into this, or at least Super Mario ability, I always end up running trouble. If I have to do just small Mario, like doing a small Mario challenge for this world, I, I always have trouble doing so. Level number two is another scrolling style of stage. We have some small moving icy cloud-like platforms as we begin, and there's plenty of ice platforms that will cause us to slip and slide all over the place. You can pick up this ice block and use that to hit the block next to it and get yourself a either a mushroom, of course, or a leaf if you're already powered up. I'm going to stick, though, with Fire Flower, as this actually does end up helping a bunch during the ice world. Who would have thought it? A little bit ways into the level, be careful trying to climb up the series of platforms as you don't have a lot of time to do so before you have to get to the top as the screen will either crush you or you'll end up falling down below. Right after that, wait on this platform for the screen to scroll down a little bit so you can land safely on another little icy platform and then have to use this one in order to get over. Up here, if you need it, you can end up getting an extra life located, a little bit difficult to do so. And then finish up the level by running over and jumping either onto the platform and then the pipe or just straight to the pipe depending on what you want to do and move on to the next stage. Next up, the level starts with a couple of the music note boxes and you have to jump to this platform then duck underneath of it if you're Super Mario or have one of the power-ups and then run across a series of small little ice platforms, watching out for the Koopa Troopa at the end, which you can easily slide into if you're not careful. Some tricky platforming here, though, where we have to do more ducking underneath of this big ice tower, and then we can use the Koopa Troopas in order to get over to the right. Chase down this Hammer Brother since we're in the area. Pretty standard fight, but since you are on the ice platform, it can be a little bit more difficult as you run too fast, you may accidentally slide into him. Either way, he ends up dropping a hammer, which you can use if you want to, to either get to the pipe located here or one of the other ones at other parts of the world. At the beginning of this fortress, jump on this platform, which will start rising up. You can see kind of like the platform string. I always thought it was like a big rope or string that kind of led the platform on it, like it was being pulled at another end or something by an enemy. I don't know why I always thought that. Either way, it goes along this track and eventually drops down here. Be careful of the rotating, flashing enemies and hit the door. As soon as you begin the next room, there's another set of rotating enemies, so you want to be careful. Do a running slide underneath of that big little platform thing, and then into the Boom Boom battle. Here we're going to use the Fire Flower ability, since I haven't used it yet for Boom Boom. If you time it right, as soon as the battle begins and just mash fire, you'll always be able to take out Boom Boom usually before he ends up hitting you, since he starts off a little bit slow. So that's one little thing you can do to help you out. Level number four has those rotating platforms that stop for a few moments, allowing you to jump on them or jump past them. Hit this platform to use it. You can ride it all the way around if you really want to. As it hits the end, it'll end up coming back and all. But we're just going to keep going. Hit this P switch in order to cause the different blocks to become coins, watching out for another flame chomp before hitting the end of the level. Here, I'm going to head on up. You have two choices here, either level 6 or 5. I've always hated level 5, but level 5 actually guards a mushroom house that has a Hammer Brother suit. As a kid, sometimes I actually keep my cloud abilities to skip level 5 to get to the Hammer Brother suit, and then use it again just to bypass level 5 altogether. Because I always want the Hammer Brother suit, but I, I just didn't like level 5, as you'll see. Level 6, though, is a much more straightforward, underwater-based level. Just has some cheap cheeps and the like for us to kind of bypass. A little bit of cramped quarters here with a couple of piranha 
plants coming out of the pipes, but then after a series of spike enemies near the end, I always like this part where you have the cheap cheap kind of bouncing between the very small little things of water. When they're in there, you can't even see them. Uh, but it's still, I always thought it was a little cool effect of him kind of jumping between those small little ponds. For level number five, uh, you want to make sure that you have either a raccoon leaf or you can actually get one in the level, but much easier to kind of go in here with that. Also, if you really want to use it, you could use a P-Wing to help you out in this stage as well. The reason why this level is so unbelievably annoying is that you have to deal with not only these enemies, but you actually have to fly upwards into the opening here. Take out the Koopa Troopa, but don't, like, throw it away. Like, just hit it so that it goes into its shell. Wait a moment for it to pop back out, and then pick it up. And what you want to do is you need to run and get a running, flying jump so that you're able to get up here and then use it in order to take out the nippers located here. Just for whatever reason, that's not even that difficult. But as a kid, that was extremely challenging for me. I would always end up getting the leaf ability and then end up losing it before I could get back or end up losing it before I got to the turtle shell or then I would end up running out of flight just before I reached the top. I don't know. I always had problems with that spot. In here though is the mushroom house that contains a hammer brother suit. Great ability uh, that of course allows you to throw out hammers just like one of the hammer brothers and it's awesome awesome ability and I wish you could get more of them throughout the course of the game. Speaking of Hammer Brothers, taking out a couple here, and we get another star ability, though this ends up uh, just replacing the items, like I said. At this point, I have such a full inventory. I'm not really using any of the items, uh, but I have plenty of items and power-ups to use if I wanted to. After getting another cloud, head on over to the right here, and we're going to enter into level 7, which is another scrolling stage, unfortunately. We make it to the spot, wait for the screen to scroll a little bit before standing on the platform, dropping down with it in order to land safely on another platform nearby. One of those flame chomps will kind of follow you and chase you around until you end up dealing with them, so jump on his head whenever you get the opportunity to do so. Right here, once again, wait for it to drop down and make a quick jump over to the right side to land on more of these wonderful platforms before the screen ends up scrolling up a little bit. Another flame chomp will start heading your way, so once again, dispatch him. And then you want to wait a moment or two for the screen to scroll so you can drop down here because you only get one chance to make the jump over to the right. If you're able to do so, you land safely move on to the next level. Up next is another one of the fortress style upstages, and this is a nice icy one filled with booze, thwomps, and other stuff for us to deal with. Like other dungeons that had the thwomps in them, we have to wait for them to kind of go across, and then as they're retracting, we get a few moments to get past. Like right here, we have to jump up quickly into a running slide underneath, so that we're able to safely get past. Be sure to grab the power-up if you want to from that question mark block, and then continue on in the level here. After bypassing one more thwomp quickly, going through the door, we end up making it to the boss chamber. The boom boom starts on the platform up. I recommend waiting for him to come down and then delivering your jumps to him, so it's a little bit easier to deal with him. Though interesting enough, the next level is actually a grassy plain style of level. You have the piranha plant throwing up those weird spike balls that are annoying. You have spike enemies throwing spiky balls at you. You have the other beetles that will pick up the ice blocks and chucking them at you, and nippers. So you have a bunch of relatively challenging enemies, as far as this game at least is concerned, to deal with throughout the course of this stage.
Level number 9 is another underwater base level. Start off by jumping up these ice blocks and down into the pipe below. Pretty standard underwater stage with plenty of the underwater enemies. Your bloopers, your cheap cheeps, and big Bertha as well trying to munch on you running into you. Thankfully you can't swallow your hole in this instance. Watch out for the nippers here. You can take the upper path if you would like to and have a little bit of difficult platforming, smaller platforms and the like before reaching the end. At the end here, you want to make sure you jump up though into the pipe and this will actually take you to the exit of the level. Level number 10, pretty standard ice platforms at the beginning. You have to use the ice blocks, though, to kind of get through if you want to best the beetle that's also trying to throw them back at you. I always love picking them up the same time they do and throwing one at them before they're able to throw one at me. Or, like this, where I was able to make one throw one and actually in to one of his buddies. That's always satisfying. Next up is another fortress style of level, bunch of the rotating flashy enemies, as well as a bunch of spikes on the bottom here. A little bit ways in, you'll have some booze as well as the stretches here. Wait for this thwomp to go back up before going across using the conveyor belt. When you make it to this room here, immediately hold right on the D-pad so you land safely behind the booze. To immediately turn around to face them so that when the door comes down you can easily enter it and go into the boom boom battle. Very small area to battle him in, but once he's done, we get the move on to the airship for World 6. Awesome transformation of a Monty Mole there as the king is one as we then jump on to the airship itself. Wait a moment or two for the screen to scroll enough so you don't even have to really worry about the screw platform by jumping on it. You'll notice it's pretty much the theme of this particular airship. The second set, you do have to deal with a little bit. You can make a nice leap if you do have the raccoon ability to kind of fly or float over to the far right so you don't have to do it much. Even if you do have to jump on them, just kind of wait for the screen to scroll as much as possible so that when you do need to make that big leap, if you're about to slip off of it, you can do so and hopefully land safely. Maneuver your way through the set of fire cannons throughout the course of this little area. When you make it to this spot here, stand on top of the cannon, the screen will scroll up and you can get a power up located in one of these question mark blocks. Wait for the flame to retract and then jump over this short little wall before hitting the pipe and going into the boss fight. Here we deal with Lemmy. Lemmy likes to use bouncing balls and throw them at you. Get a total of three of them bouncing around the room, which can be difficult to dodge. He's very similar to Wendy in some regards, but I always like the fight just because he is riding on that ball, even though it can be difficult at times to get around the bouncing balls. World 7 is my least favorite. It's Pipe Maze, or Pipe Land, and it's exactly that, filled with pipes. 
The first level, we start off by working our way up these pipe platforms, and you have to pick the right pipes a lot of times to make sure that you end up making it to the next part of the level. Wait for the piranha plants to retract so you can then land into this pipe, and you actually get the cool little animation of it kind of scrolling upwards as Mario is bouncing around the pipe. Head up this pipe here, and then you can jump up using the music note block, making your way through the little small area. There's a couple of piranha plants that will pop out here, so you wait for them to go away. You can stand on the very edge of the platform a little bit, having to hit another music note block before landing up here. Now, the smart way to do this is try to get past the Koopa Troopas and get to the far left and go up, but I'm not always going to do that. Instead, I bounce off the one Koopa Troopa into a Paratroopa above me and then complete the level that way. You'll notice that there's a lot of pipes that you can actually enter and travel through in this world, a lot of which will either lead you to dead ends or just back to where you already were. The next level is a desert-themed area. You have some ice blocks that are located here as well, as you can use them to kind of take out the nippers. Gonna hit that first block though, so it ends up giving me one of the power-ups, because I ended up using it. To the next part, you want to jump over here, and what you want to do is jump up and hit all of these blocks, or at least a bunch of them, so that you have a nice kind of core set of platforms that you'll be able to use when we come back around. Then go through the pipe on the left side and up the next pipe and you'll come back out here. This will allow us now to jump over and use the music note blocks in order to continue on in this level. A little bit confusing, but overall not too terrible. Whole bunch of fire spewing piranha plants as we make it through, and one more nipper before we make it to this pipe, which ends up taking us downwards to another pipe, but finally, to the exit of the stage. The next level, start off by grabbing the star from this block, and you can use that to run through a big portion of the beginning here. Either using the hills to slide down, or nice big jumps, and you can kind of get through a large portion of it. A little bit way in, watch out for the spinies being thrown down at you. And just keep on working on these small little hills. There are some gaps that you could fall down, but thankfully not too bad. As you begin the next level, there's a bunch of pipes. Any of them are going to take you inside of the maze-like pipe area that we have to deal with. Another level that I'm not really all that fond of. Head down the pipe located here into this room, and you'll have a bunch of these bombs waiting for you. Do a slide underneath and wait for the bombs to explode. Watch out for the Koopa Troopa, we're going to head up the pipe at the far right here, and this will allow us to kind of get through. Hitting this block will get us one of the Leafs, though. Once we have that, head back down to the pipe, and then up here and go into the middle pipe. This is the one that you need to take so you can actually jump up. The other little openings on the other pipes just end up having a block there that stops you. Run to the right and open up the space here using your Leaf ability, and you can slide on through. Take a large portion of the upper path here, and then head on through the pipe at the end. Now here I'm going to trick it a little bit by just instantly doing a flight over to the right here, and this bypass is a little bit of trouble. Normally you would drop on down, have to hit a whole bunch of blocks so you create a bridge, then go back up the pipes and back around, and then you can make it over here, but doing that little running thing with the leaf allows me to bypass a little bit of it. Next is another water-based level, head into either pipe at the beginning of the stage, and this is a scrolling water level, which can be a tad bit difficult. You have spiky, or spiny cheap cheeps, and we're gonna head up to the top portion, wait for the screen to scroll a little bit, watching out for these spiky cheap cheeps, so you can hit that question mark block that was located there for a power-up if you need to. A lot of this level, though, is just filled with enemies. If you don't have the Fire Flower ability going in, which I highly recommend, it can be troublesome to get through. Also, having the Frog Suit can help you out a little bit, because you can swim a bit easier throughout the course of this area. 
As it scrolls up here, you'll then have to swim in between all of these Gelectros that are just kind of hanging out, flashing, shocking things, and just kind of swim in between all of them as we make our way over. Once we make it to the next portion, though, we have to deal with these bloopers that are moving about, throwing out the little bloopers in our direction. But because they, you know, can have a sporadic pattern, it can be a little bit difficult at times to dodge. You can hit this block and get another power-up if you need to. And make sure you don't end up getting crushed as the screen slowly scrolls on by. Watch out for a few more enemies, and thankfully we finally hit the pipe and move on to the next stage. The next level is a fortress and a very annoying one, but there is a trick to it. We're going to start off by jumping up here and hitting this P-switch, dropping down to the floor and going through the door. Once we're down here, you have to have a ability to fly, and you need to fly up and enter this pipe located here in order to get to the end of the level and get to the Boom Boom fight. If you're unable to get up there, you'll just end up looping back around to the areas. Thankfully, there is a power-up that keeps respawning, so you can get through, but you have a pretty strict time limit, only two minutes, which most levels have more than that throughout the course of them. But if you're able to get through, that's probably the most annoying fortress, or at least the most annoying in my opinion. In the pipe level, though, there's a couple of little extra stages that are piranha plants on the map. Basically, they're just filled with pipes and piranha plants for us to deal with, nippers and the ones that shoot fire and all the other kinds. Wait for this platform here, you can kind of duck in order to avoid some of the fireballs before entering this pipe here, in which case you'll also be rewarded with an item for completing it, in this case, a P-Wing. From here, we're going to head on over to level number 6. Jump over the pipe at the beginning and just head on through the door. This is one of those areas that, of course, you can go through one side and come back out the other side of the screen. And we have these platforms that make those ghost platforms that we'll have to use to try to help and guide us upwards. A lot of times you'll have to jump on them and move them just a little bit in order to keep getting up. Like right here, you also have to go back and forth watching out for the spikes as it heads on up. For this next part, you want to hit this one and then go underneath, ducking under, and you can easily get to the pipe on the opposite side. Now you want to hit this one, another one of the exclamation point ones, and you need to use your jumps and time it right so you don't end up hitting the spikes above you and end up making the platform go up this portion. As it gets high enough, you can maneuver it a little bit to the left before it ends up dissipating and then keep jumping your way up. Here, you'll have to once again manipulate it by jumping on it to get around the piranha plants that are coming out of the pipes on both the left and right sides, and then over to the right here, and then jump up in order to get to the pipe and exit the stage. Level number 8 starts us off by entering a pipe, but it takes us just to another area instead of an underground inside area. This is a difficult stage though, because you have to hit this star, then run and keep gathering stars while being able to run on all of the nippers. You have a limited amount of time because the invincibility doesn't last long. On the one right there, you want to wait for it to bounce a little bit to the right, and then use it to get over here because you have a very small amount of time to hit the one here. The level's not exceptionally long, thankfully, but still, if you're unprepared or you can't get the timing quite right, it can be a little bit difficult.
Onwards to the next stage here, another plains level, and this one has always been a pain to me. There's a ton of piranha plants throughout the course of this stage, and if you don't have power-ups going in, it can be a bit difficult to get through. There's just a lot of stuff kind of going on, and have a lot of stuff to avoid, like the annoying little piranha plants that shoot up the spiked balls up into the air. Either using fire flowers or using your leaf ability will help you. Wait for the fire spewing plant to dissipate so that you can easily get up there and jump high enough to get to that platform. Here, once again, use your ability to kind of take out these guys. Not having one going into this area can be almost suicide in some regards. I mean, it's just a really tricky level overall. Level number 9 is a weird maze desert themed area. Start off by heading through the openings here, watching out for the Paragoomba bouncing around, and then go to the left, hitting these ice blocks. Once you go through a couple of walls of them, head on up and head over to the right. Jump over the gap, and then there's another gap coming up that has music note blocks located there. Drop on down and head to the left and use the ice blocks to once again kind of get out of your way so that you can keep going. You'll see a bouncing Koopa Troopa below you. Watch out for him and then drop on down to where it was located and head over to the right. Jump up in this little opening, dealing with another couple of ice walls, and then keep jumping up and you'll be back to this section with more. Just go right through them and thankfully we're almost near the end of this level. After hitting this last set of ice blocks, we can then drop down into the pipe below, finishing up the stage. We have two levels left here, the first of which is another fortress style of stage. Watch out for all of the lava, you have to make a pretty big jump at the very beginning to get up to the pipe. A lot of this is just kind of the waiting game for those right moments to kind of get up. Watch out for the thwomp and quickly get to the pipe, and then just keep slowly working your way through. Anytime there's multiple piranha plants at once, it can be really difficult if you're only small Mario. Thankfully, there are some power-ups in the level itself. At the end, you'll have to drop on down. If you have the leaf, it's really easy. Without it, it can be a little bit more difficult for sure to actually reach that place safely. Slide underneath here, and you have to do this a couple of times. You want to manipulate the Thwomp Eater by running underneath and sliding quickly and keep running, or get it to fall, and as it's retracting, do the running slide underneath. Either way, right past that, though, is the Boom Boom, and once it's defeated, we have one more stage left in World 7 before the airship. This is another one of those weird piranha pipe type levels here with the nippers kind of coming in and out by just rotating back and forth between the pipe and then the pipe next to them. Thankfully pretty easy and short area and by completing it you end up getting rewarded with another item. In this case just a standard mushroom for doing all this. But thankfully we are at the airship and as a little bonus I'm going to go ahead and use one of my frog suits I gathered earlier on in the game and use that to complete this airship. We get a nice little cameo from Yoshi here, as we find that the king has been turned in to a Yoshi. This is of course a pretty tough airship, obviously, since we are going to be using also a frog ability, which isn't going to help very much. You have the screwing platform right near the very beginning with a series of flames. Land safely on these platforms and just wait for the flames to kind of go away, and you can get through that a little bit easier. Drop down and hit the question mark block if you do want to power up though, or you do need one. Here I'm just going to wait for the screen to scroll enough, and I can make a big running leap safely over to the right to land on this platform here. Wait for the flame to go away, and then quickly jump to the platform, and then jump immediately off of the platform to the right, landing once again safely on this one, and we have one of those annoying little, uh, wrench-throwing rocky wrenches. We can hit this block here, though, to help us get up. You can either do a running slide underneath, or if you're small Mario, you can run underneath that, but if you're frog Mario, you can't duck, which is annoying, so we have to kind of jump up to that top portion. Small little leap for us to do right here, and land on this platform with one of those rocky wrenches. You have a series of these like kind of small moving airship parts as the screen starts to scroll on past. 
This is actually a nice little practice for a level that we had to deal with in World 8, though, with a lot of these really small airship-like platforms. The frog, though, has the ability to jump pretty far, and because of this, it actually ends up working a little bit beneficial, at least partially, in this stage, though it's still a bit difficult to deal with. Here, once again, you have a bunch of the screws. We can just jump immediately to the far upper right one and then use that to kind of get over the wall, which will lead us to the Koopaling encounter against Ludwig. Now, this one is another one just like Roy that ends up making heavy stomps when he ends up bouncing around the room. Wait for him to pop back up and easily jump on him to finish him off and move on to the eighth and final world of the game. When we see at the end of World 7, we don't get a bonus item or anything, we just get a letter from Bowser saying that he kidnapped the princess and moving on now to World 8. This is a very war-like setting where you have a bunch of these airships and like basically Bowser, Bowser's militia that is pretty much trying to take us out here. It's a series of a couple of levels in a row that are very airship-like as far as cannons and other stuff trying to hit us. Flames popping out of things, the bombs everywhere, the rocky wrenches. Just a lot of military-esque feel through these stages for sure. There are also scrolling levels as all of the tanks and the like are going past us as we're trying to jump over them and get past all of the different hazards. Still using the frog suit, though, it does help me make some of these leaps a tad a bit easier, though. Right there is a power-up if you want to go ahead and, and grab it, especially if you're small, Mario. It's easy to be able to grab that. Right after a little area with some bombs, you have a giant cannon ready to fire at you, so either be ducking or immediately jump so that you can land safely up on this platform here. And this is actually the very end of the stage as we head on down the pipe. Heading down the pipe, we have to deal with a single lone boomerang brother that's going to try to attack us, and we end up getting rewarded with just a simple star for completing the level. The second militia-style level is basically Bowser's Navy here. We just got done Bowser's Army. We have Bowser's Air Force that we we'll have to deal with later. This is basically Bowser's Navy in this level. It's on the water. You can actually jump off the bridge at the very beginning of the level and get underneath the boats themselves and just keep mashing the swim button and stay under there. And it just makes the level a lot easier to deal with. You just have to jump up at the very end, which can be sometimes a little bit difficult to do so if you can't time the jump just right. However, just to uh, make things a little bit more interesting, I'll just stay on top of the ships themselves. I actually find this level a little bit easier than the one we just dealt with, but it's still more of the same with the cannons, rocky wrenches, and the like that are trying to take us out. You also have a few of those very large cannons, which can be a little bit more difficult to dodge here. Right past the one giant cannon, we go right into another giant cannon waiting for us immediately on that next ship. And then a series of smaller cannons on the far right, which we're just going to make a big running leap, and that'll allow us to kind of get past all of them without even having to go down there. Right after that, you have another giant cannon and some bombs, but there is the pipe that we can go down. And once you're down here, you get the Battle of Boom Boom that's waiting for you. Thankfully, we're pretty used to fighting these guys by now, and once it's taken care of, we move on to the next area of World 8.
This next area here has a couple of levels that can potentially pull you into them and you'll have to complete them. They're just little short levels overall, and there's three of them that you have to deal with. One that's just filled with lava and some short bridges for us to get across. The end of each of them has a pipe that will end up containing an item for you to grab. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and complete all three of these, uh, but they can sometimes not grab you. If you're really lucky, you can get past all three without any of them grabbing you, or you could accidentally have all of them end up grabbing to you. It's just a little bit of luck. The next one we're gonna do here is the third one, actually, and it's the one with a bunch of bridges, lava, and cheap cheeps everywhere. Unfortunately, I can't complete this one with the frog suit because I have to get underneath it here, uh, so I will have to lose the froggy suit for now. The first of the set of levels here is I get a leaf to help me out if I wanted to use it. Uh, but what we're going to do is go over to the right and this time it ends up grabbing me. And we have one that's filled with all the different Hammer Brother types throughout. Start off with a Fire Brother waiting for us. Then you have a couple of Hammer Bros on a series of these block platforms for us to deal with. Right after that you have a Boomerang Brother and then finally a Sledge Brother waiting for you before you hit the pipe and finish up the stage. The next level we're going to do, though, is Bowser's Air Force, basically, and this is a really tough level. It moves quicker than all the other scrolling-style levels in the game, and this is one of those levels as a kid, and for a long time I would always use P-Wing to help me out. It's still very doable as far as normal platforming goes, but there's a lot of enemies here, the flames coming out, and long jumps that you'll have to make in order to try to survive. Usually the most deadly thing for me was the wrenches, as they can go a pretty long distance I'm trying to make these jumps, and the screen keeps scrolling, so the wrench keeps going along the screen as well before finally going off of it. Finally, when we reach the end of the level, it's another boom boom fight for us to deal with. Pretty simple, once again, just in a pretty open area. This is one of the para ones, so he can fly around if you let him get the opportunity to do so. Thankfully, that is the last of these for a little bit. We have one more of the army-like levels that we have to deal with right before the final stage of the game. But for now, we get to go through this pipe and into this weird dark area where you're not really able to see too well, but there's a couple of stages that we have to deal with here. First up is a pretty difficult platforming stage that we have to watch out for the piranha plants and the pipes and such, but you have to make a couple of tough jumps. Be careful of jumping down from this pipe here because you can get bounced off and into the hole if you're not careful about it. Extra life you can gather there if you want to do so, as a barrage of bullet bills are slowly chasing me down. When you make it here, you gotta wait for the Koopa Troop to go back up, but if you mistime it, there's sometimes bullet bills will end up firing out. And then at the end, you have to use this music note block to get up to the next pipe, which sometimes doesn't work for me. I've always had some trouble with the music note boxes. The next level is kind of a desert-themed area here. We're going to start off, though, by heading down this group of sand, this quicksand. Normally, you wouldn't want to go down in the quicksand, usually leads to death, but not in the case of this level. In fact, we pop out at the bottom and can take a little bit of a shortcut, heading down the pipe here and taking us to a little special area with a bunch of coins as we fall down. Once we come out of the pipe, though, we're going to end up on this hill, watching out for the piranha plants firing at us, and then head on down the other side. You can then use the music note blocks to kind of spring your way over to the right and finish up the stage. Next up is the last fortress of the game, and here we have to maneuver our way through a series of doorways. There's just a lot of potentially confusing maze-like elements in this level. The path we got to get through, though, we're going to get the mushroom and then break open these blocks to head in the door here. As soon as you pop out, though, you're going to be on a conveyor belt with lava right on the left and right side, which, if you're not paying attention, you may accidentally fall into. Hit this block here in order to get yourself a leaf 
power up, hopefully you kept the mushroom already at this point, and then head on over to the far right. You can use your tail then to break open all of the blocks located here. Keep on heading on over to the right side, watching out for the rotating flashy enemies. And when you drop on down here, you can get past this thwomp, and one of these blocks here will give you a P-switch. Hit it, and then head over to the right, past this first door. Don't go through there, instead you want to go through the other door. Then you just gotta wait for the P-switch ability thing to go away, and duck it down here, or if you're small Mario, you can just ride across, and this will take you to the battle against Boom Boom, which happens to be on a conveyor belt here. Now we're at the second to last level of the game, and this is another army-style stage with tons of cannons, and basically it's another part of our Bowser's militia here that we have to kind of deal with. There's a lot, of course, going on as far as projectiles, but bombs, which of course when they explode, they have a pretty good hit radius, and since the screen is slowly scrolling by, it can be a tad bit difficult to dodge everything that's coming your way. However, as a kid, I actually found this level easier, for some reason, than the Air Force-like one with all the fast-moving platforms. Maybe just because I wasn't quick enough at the time to be able to keep jumping from those platforms to platforms. Or, this level is another one you could use a P-Wing if you wanted to, you know, kind of help you out as far as getting through it. Once we make it to the end of the level, drop down for one last Boom Boom battle. Gonna miss these, aren't you? Have we only fought like a ton of them throughout the course of the game? Once he's defeated though, it's time to move on to the final level of the game, Bowser's Castle. I always liked the icon on the world map for Bowser's Castle. I just thought it always was pretty intimidating, especially the NES version. This is a pretty overall cool design to castle. Start by running immediately to the right and you'll watch out for the laser spewing statues that are located there. Once you make it to this part, you're going to drop on down and be sure to hit right on the D-pad so you can land safely on the platform before it falls down into the pit. I usually like to get a running jump so that I'm able to kind of fly my way up the first set of staircase and then work my way down the second. Work your way up to the top portion of this area, either by flying up or jumping between the platforms, and then make it to this one and drop down just a little bit and jump to the right. If you jump immediately on that one, you'll end up hitting your head and falling down. So you want to wait for it to fall a little bit, then jump up into the upper right corner, which will take you to the end of the area here, where you have a whole bunch of fireballs coming your way with some small platforms. Enter into the door at the end, and it's time to battle Bowser himself. For this battle, you have to watch out for the flames that he shoots out. He'll fire one, two, or three flames before then jumping towards you and stomping down wherever you're standing. Our goal is to get him to break apart all these blocks and eventually fall into the pit at the bottom. With the flames, sometimes they're just going to go over your head and sometimes they will come close enough where they'll be able to hit you. If he's down in the pit or way above you though, thankfully the flames won't end up being able to land. The trickiest part, though, is timing it to get past him as he does his jumps so that he lands where you want him to. However, once he falls to the ground and is defeated, you can go through the door at the end and enjoy the ending to Super Mario Bros. 3.
For the ending, you get the nice little world roll call as you get to see each world and then the name for each of the worlds. They have some unique names like Desert Hill and Pipe Maze for World 7, though originally they didn't actually have different names, they were just named whatever land, like Desert Land or Ice Land. Overall, Mario 3, one of the best platformers, of course, of all time. It's an iconic game. It's extremely well remembered and one that people still end up enjoying playing today. It's one of my personal favorites, of course, though Mario World is probably my overall favorite of the classic Mario platformers. I just think I ended up playing it a little bit more since it was like the game that made me fall in love with my Super Nintendo. I ended up liking that one just that tad bit more, but Mario 3 is still an amazing game overall. After the world roll call, we then get one last curtain coming down and then the end there. What's cool is you, you actually start the game over again and play it again. You actually end up having all P-Wings in your inventory, which was kind of a, a neat little thing as a new game plus kind of thing if you want to play the game again. But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up this episode of Play It Through. I would like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.